Trump to forego debates and address United Auto Workers. Donald Trump is the only candidate who sings, fanfare for the common man. If you are a music lover as I am, you probably already love, fanfare for the common man, by American composer, Aaron Copeland. Who better to extol the virtues of common everyday men and women than an American citizen, no longer under the authority of a king or queen. Copeland's score is breathtakingly beautiful, yet simple. And because it's played in musical 5 THS, it has the unique sound of a biblical epic, depicting imperial Rome. As I listen, I can almost visualize a conquering Roman general marching his troops to the Temple of Jupiter and an audience with Caesar himself, through one of the more than 50 arches of triumph in the city of Rome. These arches were so important that Napoleon commissioned an Arch of Triumph to be built in Paris to commemorate his triumphs and conquests. So, it is ironic that this musical fanfare of trumpets and brass instruments is dedicated not to a king or emperor, but rather to the common man, who no less than kings and queens, is made in the image of God. Our country fought its first war for independence against Mother England between 1775-1783. I remember being a young student in grade school and first hearing of the Revolutionary War to gain our independence from England and her king. In all honesty, it was a bit hard to understand. The Civil War on the other hand was easy to grasp. As a boy of 10, I knew that the Civil War was fought to bring an end to slavery. It was also the first war that was photographed extensively, so I could see actual pictures of the principal figures and battle sites. The Revolutionary War was more abstract. I freely admit that I could not conceive the significance of being under the sovereign rule of a monarch or the importance of self-rule. And why would people be so up in arms over a tax that was less than a penny? Go figure. As I grew older, I started to see the significance of self-rule. The problem for us common men and women here in the United States is that we take self-rule, individual rights, and our freedoms for granted. If that was true when I was a boy 60-plus years ago, it's more so today. Ask the average teenager what they like about self-rule and their individual liberties and you'll get a blank stare. You are more likely to hear them ramble on about being citizens of the world or the need to protect Mother Earth, and that our individual freedoms must be subjected to governmental controls to save the planet from capitalism. Not only do our young defer their rights to the government, all to save the planet, but they are all too ready to defer decisions about their future to a handful of elites, masquerading as experts, or important Hollywood stars, with whom they want desperately to identify. What happened to the common man and woman that Aaron Copeland so extolled with the tribute paid to them, by his, fanfare to the common man? I fear that the only message we have for the common man or woman today is, shut up and do what you are told by your betters. In truth, these betters are often just corrupt and slash or ignorant conmen and can women who have figured out a way to game the system for their own enrichment. They have been living large for so long, they believe they're entitled to it. And everywhere you look, it's exactly the same. The common man or woman is considered a deplorable, or one of those little people in flyover country, meaning, people of no real value. This proves one of my incontrovertible rules of life, the world will always have kings and queens. Mind you, we don't have literal kings and queens, but we do have corporate oligarchs, wealthy industrialists, tenured academics, global bankers, untouchable justices, powerful clergy and politicians who behave like the kings and queens of old. I'm sure that my list is not complete, there are many within our society who believe themselves to be special. As a Christian, I look at the teaching of scripture and I see that God looks at mankind in very different ways than the elites do, he favors the lowly, downtrodden and poor. Here are just a few verses in the New Testament which speak to having an attitude of humility. For by the grace given to me I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. For consider your calling, brothers, not many of you were wise according to worldly standards, not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise, God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong, God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. When our founding fathers settled this great land, the common man was ever in their view. Some would argue that they were rich, white and educated. 
but being influenced by the scriptures and the Protestant Reformation, they strove to create a level playing field, one in which birth, wealth or one's station in life did not determine their value. So their mission was to create a just system where we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness, preamble to the Declaration of Independence. Elegant in its simplicity, our founding fathers believed that all men, regardless of who they were, had the right to go as far as hard work, thrift and ingenuity would take them. It was the first meritocracy ever created in human history, a country where common men were acknowledged to have rights, not granted by the state, or a king, but God-given rights to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. This is the fanfare, the acknowledgement of the common man and his dignity given him by Almighty God. From the lowest laborer, to the president, all men are equal before the law. History shows that this idea was relatively new, actually unheard of in practice before our Declaration of Independence and Constitution of the United States. All chronicled human history knows nothing but kings and queens ruling dynastically, often for centuries, over the oppressed common men and women struggling just to survive. It grieves me to observe, for this once great land, the kings and queens are back. They once again rule over the people, not for the people's good, but for their own enrichment. Joe and Hunter Biden are the poster children for this abuse. But it doesn't stop there, it's in the halls of Congress and in our state capitals. It's in our corporations and, tax-free non-government agencies, schools and banks. And sadly, it's in our churches as well. For centuries, a clergy system in Europe shackled the people of God to a corrupt church where priestcraft and, selling salvation, was the rule. For most of church history, the very word of God, yes, the scriptures were kept out of the hands of common men and women. In the centuries prior to the Reformation, it was an infraction worthy of death to translate the word of God and make it available to the common men and women sitting in the pews. Many men died trying to bring the word of God to the common men. John Wycliffe, who in the 14th century decried the wealth and political power of the church, called the faithful to humbly follow Jesus with no regard for worldly possessions. John Huss was another pre-Reformation pastor who challenged the corruption and power of Rome, and sought to put the word of God in the language of the people. And then William Tyndall, who dared to translate God's word into the common language of the people and make it accessible to the common man. Possibly his most remembered quote. I will cause a boy who drives a plow to know more of the scriptures than the Pope. These giants of the faith were in many ways the spiritual fathers of the American Revolution. A revolt, not to empower a man as king or emperor, but rather to empower the common man. While everywhere we see signs that the common man has been forgotten, except at tax time, the elite kings and queens who mostly rule our land, have grown fat and arrogant. It's no accident that like the monarchs and high church clergy before them, they seek to control information, restricting it to their royal class. They care not whether the common man or woman has a decent job, food or enjoys a modicum of happiness. No, as kings and queens have always done, they rule in their own self-interest and against the will of the people. They ignore the constitution and use our taxes to bribe unjust judges and corrupt leaders in all facets of American life, to give monies to their sycophant toadies. On Wednesday, September 27, former President Donald Trump will speak to UAW members in Detroit, Michigan, over the objections of the UAW, United Auto Workers, bosses. This is unprecedented in that unlike the union bosses who are owned and controlled by the Democrat Party, the rank-and-file common man and woman who does the work, know that the elites in both political parties have sold their jobs to China for personal cash and political power. Trump addressing UAW workers makes this event startling. 1. Trump is foregoing the Republican debate of mostly all Sarans in the Republican Party who make the same empty promises every four years, but even more. 2. President Donald Trump will be speaking to the common men over the objections of the kings and queens, including the UAW union bosses. Donald Trump gets the common men, he feels for their plight as their jobs are being given away, not because they can't compete but because China is paying cash directly into the pockets of American kings and queens who have sold out. Trump doesn't just talk, he has actually done things to once again. Hail the common man's and woman's dignity in the sight of God. I don't believe Donald Trump is a musician, but somehow, he has mastered playing Aaron Copeland's beautiful, fanfare to the common men. And he's playing it loud enough for everyone to hear. When Trump says, make America great again, He's just doing his own rendition of, fanfare to the common man. Soli Deo Gloria.